You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Concerning the issues of life, liberty, and justice, and their impact on individuals, culture, society in America, and around the world, this is The Truth Spoken in Love with your host, Myra Jean. Myra will discuss heartfelt topics facing our nation and our world today, as only Myra can. So please welcome the host of The Truth Spoken in Love, Myra Jean. You are listening to The Truth Spoken in Love for you. I'm your host, Myra Jean, coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. In love for you, for your life, for freedom, for you as a citizen, whether that's America or another country, uh, around the world, everyone needs to realize as today's title, I put, everyone is essential. Everyone matters. Everyone is valuable. And if you didn't realize it personally before, you are essential to the one who created you. Jesus, Lord God, creator of heaven and earth and mankind he treasures you and considers you essential for his kingdom his lordship gives us the meaning the purpose of life as it was created to be and in Christ we We are created unto good works that he planned beforehand that we should live our lives doing and our purpose and his plan can only come to fruition through the Son of God Jesus God manifested his love toward us by sending his son, his only begotten son, into the world that we should live through him. He sent his only begotten son into the world to be the savior of the world. Yes, we needed saving for we are lost. We are lost without the Savior. We are lost without Jesus, the Creator, the Lord, God, and the Savior. Jesus gave an example of just how much he values every human being. In John, in John chapter 8, Very early in the morning, as Pharisees came to the temple, all the people came to Jesus, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, 
this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote in the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Then Jesus spoke to those listening, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said to him, You bear witness of yourself. Your witness is not true. Jesus answered and said to them, Even if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true, for I know where I came from and I know where I'm going. But you do not know where I come from and where I am going. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. And yet if I do judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am with the Father who sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one who bears witness of myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness of me. Jesus came to bear witness to the lost. And all we like sheep, once or still are, going astray, turning each one his, her own way, separated from God, spiritually dead, without hope in this world. But Jesus says, I am come to seek and to save those that are lost. Come unto me, all who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest, my peace, my life. For I have come to seek and to save you. We will be taking a short break. Stay tuned. Be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? 
Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick. Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy EasySense.com and learn how, with your help, we can fight these horrific brain disorders. That's EasySense.com to learn more and help support the Broderick Foundation. You are listening to the truth spoken in love for you, that you would live with the fullness of the life that comes through the Son of God, Jesus the Christ. Receive Him right now and be born again be full of the Holy Spirit of God to know the truth the truth that sets you free to discern between right and wrong good and evil here I'm going to quote a statement by Matt Getz he says those who don't know the truth who walk in error are unable to defend their radical policies. They resort to canceling their enemies. They set a double standard and determine who is worthy of forgiveness and who deserves to lose their job and have their life destroyed. The mainstream media has joined in this cancel culture and also gets to decide who is irredeemable. It's time to cancel cancel culture. It is destroying our country and preventing any meaningful debate on issues important to Americans. Are these the kind of people you want to decide if you can have an unpopular opinion and express that opinion using your First Amendment rights? What about determining whether you should be forgiven for a mistake you made in your past? The time is now to say your piece and join the fight Otherwise, tomorrow we might be canceled if this toxic behavior continues to get worse. I'm tired of cancel culture. You can look up Matt Gaze running for Congress. And let us take a look at the Daily Signal and their article. Politicians have too much power over our lives. Many use the pandemic as another excuse to take more. Early on, politicians declared that they would decide who was essential. Everyone else was told to stay home. Much of the economy stopped. Millions were laid off. Then politicians relaxed the rules for industries that they deemed essential. You can't just call somebody essential without implicitly suggesting that half the workforce is not essential, points out Mike Rowe, host of the surprise hit TV series, Dirty Jobs. That's a big problem, says Roe, because people find purpose in work. Now the Biden administration is eager to give money to people not working. It's pushing a new stimulus package that would pay the unemployed an additional $400 a week since states like mine take it on as much as 500 a week in unemployment benefits 
Many people learn that the $900 a week leaves them with more money if they don't go back to work. So many don't. But staying home imposes costs too. Calls to suicide hotlines are up. Domestic violence is up. It's happening because people simply don't feel valued, says Roe. Politicians claim they save lives when they order businesses to close. Como said, announcing a lockdown, if everything we do saves one life, I'll be happy. When many then lose value, no work, no job. What's the best way for America to reopen and return to business? The National Coronavirus Recovery Commission a project of the Heritage Foundation, assembled America's top thinkers to figure that out. So far, it has made more than 260 recommendations. Well, mocks that in a new video. He says, let's knock the speed limit down to 10 miles an hour, make cars out of rubber, make everybody wear a helmet, cars are a lot safer in the driveway, ships a lot safer when they don't leave harbor, and people are safer when they sit quietly in their basements. But that's not why cars, ships, and people are on the planet. Will points out that working and accomplishing things are big parts of what makes life worth living he runs a foundation that gives scholarships to people to help them learn trades like construction. Of course, construction is dangerous. Some people get killed. Como, should we stop building things? Will likes the phrase, safety third, as a response to people who constantly preach safety first. The one who really gets it done, they're not out there talking about safety first. They know that other things come first. Every single time I've hurt myself, it's been in that fraction of a moment when I take my eye off the ball and I start to think that maybe somebody somewhere cares more about my well-being than me, he says. Rose says COVID-19 challenges us to figure out how to live in a dangerous world. But guess what? That's always been the case. He cites C.S. Lewis' essay on living in an atomic age in which Lewis asks, how are we supposed to live in a world with atomic weapons when everywhere when everything could be over like that. Lewis answered, the same way we live in a world when the Vikings could land on the shore a thousand years ago and raid villages. Row, well, there's more to life than worrying about our death, writes Lewis, sorry, it's Lewis. We must resolutely train ourselves to feel that the survival of man on this earth is not worth having unless it can be had by honorable and merciful means. COVID-19 is just different, says Roe. We'd be well advised to understand where the risks are and then we'd be better advised to go about the living, the business of living the only life we have. We will be taking a short break. Stay tuned. Be right back. 
into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and to Tune in radio. You are listening to the truth spoken in love for you, in love for your life, in love for your freedom. I'm your host, Meyer Jean, coming to you live from BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I want to share a testimony and a discussion she has. This is Representative Lauren Bobert. Representative Lauren Boebert, a Republican of Colorado, a rep, was raised in a Democrat household and was on welfare before her journey to becoming a conservative member of Congress. She quotes, I am raised, I was raised in a Democrat household. I was stuck under failed policies that put us into a cycle of poverty with no incentive to get out. At 11 years old, I stood in bread lines. I waited for government cheese. And that's not America's best, Bogart says. She's also a wife, mom, entrepreneur with her own restaurant, Shooter's Grill. How does she juggle all these aspects of life? And what's her advice? to other women and men in similar situations. Bogart, who is a freshman lawmaker, joins the Daily Signal podcast to discuss all this and more, as well as her trip on a recent congressional delegation to the U.S.-Mexico border. This Daily Signal podcast is available on uh, Widget, Apple Podcasts, Pipa, Google Play, and Stitcher. And now I see here these other stories. Security officials testifying before two Senate committees say they believe the riot at the Capitol was a coordinated attack. To Republican Senators Grill, President Biden's nominee for Secretary of Health and Human Services, on his vote against banning partial birth abortion. Three, the Senate confirms Linda 
Thomas Greenfield to the position of ambassador to the United Nations. And I wanted to get more of what she said. Let's see, here it is written. The Daily Signal podcast by Congressman Lauren Bobert of Colorado. Congressman Bobert, it's great to have you on the Daily Signal podcast. Representative Bobert, thank you so much for having me, Rachel. And the question, you and I actually just went on a trip together to the U.S.-Mexico border. Can you share with us just some of the takeaways you got from the trip? Bobert, sure. First, I had a wonderful and informative time on the congressional delegation trip, and I want so much for the team here hosting us. That was really a treat to take us down and see the wall in person and what's going on. On the border, it's really a conflict between the cartels in Mexico and the border patrol in the US. The cartels send over 90% of the drugs, including heroin, cocaine, that are destroying our communities. That's a problem. They also play a large part when it comes to human trafficking and engaging in sex trafficking, which is just horrific. We must put an end to that. The first day that you and I were there on the border, there were five unaccompanied minors that were comprehended, and that really comes to the heart of the wall. I believe that building a wall is the most moral and just thing that we can do. It's shameful, immoral, and disgusting to signal to poor and desperate people that they should risk their lives, that they should break our laws, in hopes that somehow they might make it across, might not get caught, might survive, and then we'll take care of them with our hard-earned tax dollars. We could just look to California and see how that's working for them. We need a secure border. The border patrol officers that you and I met with want the wall. Under his administration, construction has been halted. We saw the eight-foot gaps where there's supposed to be a gate to finish securing the border wall and those are wide open. That's how the cartel can send folks over. She says, when we were there, we got to see Palominus Elementary School in Arizona, where the law enforcement told us that they really routinely have to put the school on lockdown because the drug cartel traffic there is going by the school. The host asks, I just wanted to ask you, what was your perspective of this? Just seeing how real this becomes for students at the border. Robert, we have to ask the question, in what other community in America would this be okay? Where schools are on lockdown nearly once a day and there's constant threats to a school where children are being sent. I certainly would be making changes if that was happening at my children's schools. So why is it okay for Arizonans and folks who are along the border to have to put their children in harm's way every day. In Trump's administration, illegal immigration was the lowest it had been in 17 years. He understood the problem and he addressed it. Biden needs to protect Americans and secure the border.
We will be taking a short break. Stay tuned. Be right back. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBM Global Network. The opiate epidemic has reached crisis levels, and with so many families affected by addiction, opiate-related drug overdoses, and death, the time is now to have a real constructive conversation about addiction that could lead to better prevention, treatment, and recovery. Alan Charles, author and keynote speaker on drug abuse and prevention, presents The Alan Charles Show. Alan brings a message of hope, sharing his unbelievable story of surviving a 24-year addiction to cocaine and highlights from his memoir, Walking Out the Other Side, an addict's journey from loneliness to life. His raw honesty and courageous heart breaks the stigma of addiction and offers a unique perspective into the mind of an addict. Join Alan each week as he brings his listeners to a true understanding of the grip of addiction. It is only with this understanding that we can begin to heal. The Alan Charles Show, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network. You are listening to the truth spoken in love for you. To have the life that God desires to give you. To have the freedom. He who has the Son shall be made free. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Continuing this interview, she was asked, you're a freshman member of Congress, and I want to talk a little bit more about why you ran. Before we get there, though, you have your own restaurant, Shooter's Grill. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Bobert, sure. I opened my restaurant nearly eight years ago, Eight years ago, I was in the process of opening this restaurant that the city officials told me I shouldn't open. They said our restaurants are failing right now. There's a lot of work that needs to be done to your building, but we don't think that it's going to be worth it for you to invest in this restaurant and open up right now. I wanted to help my community, and so I said, I've prayed about this. I believe that we can be successful. God said, whatever I put my hand to will be prosperous. And I commit my actions to him, then they'll succeed. We went ahead with faith that if we just took that step, it would be successful and we would be able to help community members. We named our restaurant Shooter's Grill because we're in the only city in America named after a gun rifle, Colorado, the city rifle. We just wanted to serve people with excellence. We wanted to connect with people. We wanted to create opportunities for people in our community. Shortly after we opened our restaurant, there was an altercation that changed the entire outlook of our restaurant. There was a man who was, unfortunately, beat to death outside of my restaurant. He lost his life from this altercation, and I immediately needed a way to protect the people that were around me. I took advantage of Colorado's 
open carry laws, and I began to open carry in my restaurant. Soon after that, my waitresses began to carry guns in the restaurant. Before we knew it, Nightline 2020 was in our restaurant doing a story, and Shooter's Grill was being called the safest restaurant in America. The interviewer, well, what has it been like being a female entrepreneur? You mentioned the pushback you got from the city, but now that you've had this restaurant under your belt for quite a while now, what has it been like looking back on where you started from and where you are right now? Robert, it's been an amazing journey. I have met people that I would never have had the opportunity to meet. I've experienced so many different things with people who have come in from all over the world. They want to see the waitress with guns, they, but they leave with a real experience. They come in empty and we fill them up. It just shows that in America, this is truly the land of opportunity. It's not the land of guaranteed outcome, but we have an opportunity to put our hand to something and be successful. I was raised in a Democrat household. I was stuck under failed policies that put us into a cycle of poverty with no incentive to get out. At 11 years old, I stood in bread lines. I waited for government cheese, and that's not America's best. At a very young age, when we moved to the western slope of Colorado, I started working and saw with that first paycheck that I brought home to mom that I can put my hand to something and create wealth. I could do a better job taking care of myself than government ever could. I didn't have a silver spoon in my mouth. I didn't have every privileged blessing coming my way, but I had opportunity because America is exceptional and I was able to put one foot in front of the other and keep on trying until I was able to have the influence and the connections that I wanted in my community to make lives better not just my own. The interviewer, you mentioned that you were raised in a Democrat household and the impact that first paycheck had. What was that transition like? Or you can tell me a little bit more about your story from being raised in a Democrat household to now being a conservative member of Congress and member of the House Freedom Caucus. How that journey progressed. Bobert, I was being exposed to the truth. I was being exposed that these policies that we lived under weren't the best for anyone in America. It was just a way for government to have control of our lives. I mentioned that cycle of poverty. They wanted us stuck in that. My mom just believed that if we go out and try to make it on your own, it will never be enough. And then you will fail everyone around you because government can take better care of you than you can. I saw firsthand at 15 years old that that wasn't true. I actually left high school my senior year. I was offered a great position at McDonald's and I had my first son by then and I said I've been in welfare before I've been stuck in that before I don't ever want to go back to that so I took a great job that was worth more to me than my last two months of high school sitting in biology class and that really changed my life I had ownership in my position I had a great building of work ethics and it's something that never left me. I've taken the message of freedom and personal responsibility to women at my local jail, and that was just as much of a blessing and a learning experience for me as it was for them. I was able to go into the jail and have these personal connections with these women and let them know 
that their life wasn't ruined. They still had an opportunity to have a successful future, no matter what their past had looked like. Being a Christian, I was able to go into this jail and personally introduce these women to the God who turns shame into glory, who can restore whatever their past looked like. We'll be taking a short break. Stay tuned. Be right back. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern. Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. You are listening to the truth spoken in love for you, that you too would take uh, the opportunities that the Lord God, uh, his plans he has for you. For he says, I know the plans I have for you, plans for good and not for evil, plans that give you hope and a future. In Christ, as Lord God and Savior, we are created unto good works, which he planned in advance that we should live our lives doing. Receive Jesus, Lord God and Savior. Receive hope. Receive your future. A future of life, knowing the living God, having the Holy Spirit of God within you, no longer spiritually dead, but alive. Now, and for eternity. In this interview with Lauren Bobert, she says, I will go back a second here. I've taken the message of freedom and personal responsibility to women at my local jail. I was able to go into this jail and have these personal connections with these women and let them know that their life wasn't ruined. They still had an opportunity to have a successful future, no matter what their past looked like. Being a Christian, I was able to go into this jail and personally introduce these women to the God who turned shame into glory, who could restore whatever their past looked like. All those broken pieces, he could put them together and lead and guide and launch them into a successful future. I was able to offer these women jobs at my restaurant. I was able to create opportunities for them. That was far more powerful than any government program could ever be. I saw that in the Republican Party, limited government empowers we the people, and that's what I wanted to be a part of. My mom, who was a staunch Democrat, actually voted for her first Republican in 2016, Trump. Now she's a staunch Republican conservative, and she understands that all those policies before were hogwash, and she was lied to. She was deceived. Now she's been enlightened, and she understands that she can have control of her own life and her own future. She actually is a server in my restaurant, and I've never seen my mom with so much joy. She enjoys serving people. She enjoys connecting with people. She enjoys taking care of herself. Then the interviewer says, now I'm getting back to Congress. Can you tell us a little bit about why you decided to run? Robert, I was really frustrated. I'm not a politician. 
I was frustrated with politicians. I was frustrated with people who promised us one thing on the campaign trail, and then they get to Washington, D.C. They get to their state capitals, and they forget who they work for. They forget about the people who sent them there. They overregulate, overtax, overspend, and ultimately destroy everything that we are working so hard to build at home. I, as a business owner, see how those overregulations affect us. I see how the overregulations of our industries around us affect small communities. In my district, energy is a big issue. Because of government overreach, we hardly have any energy jobs in our district anymore. I want to be on the front lines of those issues and communicate why America needs to be energy independent. We need to be pursuing energy dominance. We're seeing the freezing temperatures down in Texas and how the grids couldn't supply enough energy because they had all hardly gone to renewable energy resources that are unreliable. They had largely gone to renewable. I want to promote good, clean energy. I want a good, clean environment. That means we need to be extracting those resources here at home in America, creating American jobs. Because we're not extracting these resources, China will do it. Saudi Arabia will do it. Africa will do it. Child and slave labor will be used in these countries. I don't want to see that for anyone. We need to bring back home here our energy industry. I saw a lot of politicians who had given up securing the rights of the American people. To me, that's the first thing any electric elected official needs to do. That's your oath of office to secure and defend the Constitution of the United States. I saw a lot of people who quit standing for freedom and that's why I'm honored to be a member of the Freedom Caucus. There's so many members of Congress in the Freedom Congress Caucus who are here for the right reasons, their principles, in the Freedom Caucus, we don't go to fancy dinners with champagne. We order pizza and we debate the constitutionality of a bill before it's ever voted on. In my opinion, that's what all of Congress should be doing. My motivation is giving power back to the people and limiting government overreach. The interviewer, something that you are busy on right now, Okay, we have done this, the $1.9 trillion relief bill are pushing. Uh, so we asked her perspective. Bobart, there's a lot in this bill, and there have been more than 100 hours of debate. It's, she says, it's interesting because I'm seeing in real time, Democrats, they're not concerned or affected by the concert conversations that we're bringing to the table. They've made up their mind that they want to keep creating money, throwing us further into debt, affecting our children and our children's children. This debt is going to them. Congress has already provided nearly $360 billion for state and local governments through five different COVID bills. Much of the relief was unregulated and benefited states like New York and counties like Boulder in Colorado that didn't need or deserve the funding. We will be taking a short break. Stay tuned. Be right back. MJ Domit is the owner of Expect to be Empowered, a company whose specialty is empowering people to live their best life by following their heart and accepting themselves unconditionally. After studying and making personal changes, MJ now focuses on giving others tools for self-empowerment. She provides individual and group workshops for people who are physically, emotionally, and spiritually blocked. Inspired by her work at Expect to be Empowered, MJ authored the book Waves of Blue Light, Heal the Heart and Free the Soul with accompanying empowerment cards. 
She is a Spirit Book of the Year Gold Medal Living Now Book Award winner. And her book is a number one Amazon bestseller in spirituality and was a 2012 gold medal winner recognized as the Living Now Spirit Book of the Year. An inspirational speaker, MJ will show you how you can repurpose every area of your life. Your life did not just happen to you. You chose it, which means you can change it. Visit www.expecttobeempowered.com or call 866-264-8024. Global Glory, that's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the Word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from Friends International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866 244 5679 and feel the glory. You are listening to the truth spoken in love for you so that you would know the truth, that you would live and not be deceived and not be spiritually dead, separated from God, the source of life, the one who created you, created you so that you would come to know him, that you would have purpose, hope, and a future, and be able to make use of any opportunities to live now, as well as by his Holy Spirit, have the understanding you need, perception, wisdom, for this life and for eternity. I've been sharing an interview with uh, Lauren Bovert, and she brings out some things. She says uh, there have been already five different COVID bills, and um, Congress has already provided $360 billion for state and local governments, and much of the relief was unregulated and benefited states like New York and counties like Boulder that didn't need or deserve the money. I have several other interviews and articles that we won't get to right now, but Uh, speaking of one, Dan Crenshaw spoke of how the recent 1.9 trillion bill only benefited people 9% less than 9% of that 1.9 trillion went for the benefit of citizens needing it and one percent went for COVID vaccines I'll go into further details of that next show but for now uh, learning some of the lessons that uh, Lauren said she, she said Boulder County spends six million a year on climate change initiatives. They shouldn't have a bailout from the federal government when it was their draconian measures that destroyed their local economies. It destroyed their businesses. This 1.9 trillion is a Democrat wish list and that has just been flowing from Congress and this administration and it needs to stop. 
we have nearly one trillion that's already been approved by Congress that's unspent. They're using the excuse of reopening schools. Well, there's no proof that this will even be spent in 2021 or that schools will reopen. Thank God I live in Texas. They already have been open. I think this is a great opportunity to push forward the school choice message and help the dollars follow the students. Yes. If we're going to give federal bailouts to school, it doesn't need to go to the teachers' union. It needs to go to the students. And the parents need to have the choice to send their children to a school that's actually open and will provide accurate and suitable learning. For me, what she says, Bogart, words of encouragement, it was for my children that sent me to Washington, D.C. It's their future. I thought it was selfish of me to sit at home and just complain about what was going on. My boys, my four boys, they are my motivation. My husband is my rock. We spend a lot of time together. We and let my children know that their future is worth it. Our country is worth it. I encourage everyone to get involved at whatever level works for you and your family. Making phone calls to your senators, calls matter. These emails and letters, they matter. Get involved in your local governments, the school boards, the city councils. This stuff matters. And this is how we'll begin to transform our nation and really get back on course to what our founding fathers intended our country to look like. Take heart. This has been The Truth Spoken in Love with your host, Myra Jean. The Truth versus the Deception. Tune in each week for the answers on Myra Jean's The Truth Spoken in Love. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.